How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video I'm going to show you how to remove keys, how to reinstall keys, how to reassemble the switches on the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID and numeric keypad for Mac, model A2520. It's the newest keyboard that they have out right now. Keyboard models are specific, so if this isn't the keyboard that you have, I do have some links to some other videos that I've made with other keyboard models and cleaning strategies. Check the description. Hopefully this video will save you some headache or trouble from damaging or breaking the keys by disassembling it the incorrect way. And before we get into it, if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more projects and let's get into the tutorial. And shout out to Carrie on Instagram for letting me borrow this keyboard and using it for this video. It would not have been made possible without her. The first key that we're gonna look at are the square keys. It is the most abundant key on this keyboard. All of the square keys remove the same way and also it's the same thing with the option keys down here. The only one that's a little bit different is the F19 key right here in the corner and that's not even a square. It's got a rounded edge and you would attack this one from the top instead of from the bottom. And what do I mean by attacking the key from the top or the bottom? You're gonna take a prying tool such as a small flathead screwdriver. You're going to get underneath the key, pry it up a little bit. You're gonna put pressure on the top of the key. You don't want that side to move. You're going to pry up on the corner here, and then you're gonna pry up on the corner right there. You're gonna hear two little clicks. Then you're gonna move the key down because it unhooks these two awning clips on the top, and then you'll lift the key up. Here you can see the key design. There's two lobster clips on the bottom that grab onto the key switch down here. And then there's these two awning clips on the top that actually slide over these little nubs right here on the key switch. And if you don't do it correctly, you could break off these little nubs and then you'll have to replace this key switch and it is a complete pain in the butt. If you're cleaning your keyboard, I recommend just removing these key caps, leaving the key switches on, cleaning all of these with isopropyl alcohol, cleaning the key caps with water, drying them, and then reassembling them. In order to put the key back on, you're going to do the reverse of what you did, which is get the awning clips on first, and the way you do that, you're gonna slide the key top first, and then put some pressure on the top of it while you're sliding it that direction. And then you're just going to press down on the two clips right here and that will lock the key into place. The option key is the same thing except for it's a little bit bigger. So you would put pressure on the top, pry underneath, pull up around the little corners. It actually released both of the clips at the same time. And then I'll push the key down a little bit, release those awning clips and then lift the key off. To reinstall it, same thing. Put the top of the key on first, slide it in a little bit, and then press down and lock in those clips. The F19 key is a little different. You're not going to attack it from the bottom. You're going to attack it from the top. So we're gonna put pressure down here while we pull up a little bit on the corner there, and it released the clips and lift up. And you can see this clip is designed a little bit different where the awning clips attach down here and then the lobster clips attach up here. For reinstallation we're going to slide the key over those little awning clips, push it down a little bit, and then we're going to snap those top lobster clips into place. The next key style I'm going to show you guys are the delete, the return, the zero key, this enter key over here, this escape key up here, the tab, the caps lock key, the, the command keys, the control keys. And these are keys that have one support bar on them. And you'll see it when I pry that key up. We're gonna work on this tab key right here. You're gonna attack these keys from the side slash bottom because as soon as you Pry it up, you'll see a lit, you can't really see it in the video. I can't get the angle right. There's a little wire support and you wanna get in between that wire support and the key cap. You'll run that tool along the wire support. It'll pop off a couple of clips and that will give you some more room to work with on the key. Then you'll put some pressure on the top, just like the other key. We're gonna put pressure on the top of the key and then we'll use our prying tool and pry up a little bit on the bottom of the key and you should hear a click, and then you can pull the key down, and you should be able to lift the key 
off. This is what the key switch looks like. Here's that support bar. It will come out. There's two little hooks that hold it into place, which we'll use when we reassemble the key. The key cap has the two awning clips that go over these two little nubs right here. And then there is the lobster clips in the bottom that would attach to this part of the key right here. And then there's some more clips on the bottom that hold the support bar into place. Now to reinstall this key, you're going to place the support bar in the bottom. There's two little hooks that it goes under, and then you're gonna take the key cap, you're gonna slide the top of it underneath the two little nubs on the key switch, and then you'll press down on the bottom of the key which will clip in the lobster clips as well as the support bar. The escape key at the top is designed the same way. Caps lock is designed the same way. Control is gonna be the opposite. You're gonna attack this one from the top corner and then you're gonna pop it off like that. So it's just the reverse. As you can see, the awning clips are on the bottom, the lobster clips are on the top. The command keys, the control key, the return key, the delete key, the zero key are all gonna be attacked the same way from the bottom. It's just this round control key over here that is a little bit different. The enter key over here on the numeric pad is a little bit different because of the uh, vertical design. So you gotta pry up the corner. The support bar goes on the left side of the key. So we're going to get in between that support bar and the key cap. remove it and then we're going to put pressure on the right and then upward pressure with our tool. Then you're going to push the key a little bit to the left that releases those awning clips and then you can lift the key off. The awning clips are on the rounded edge side of the key. The lobster clips are on the flat edge and for reassembly the support bar goes underneath those little hooks just kind of floats there and then you're going to drop the key on, press down on the rounded side over here, slide it underneath those awning clips, and then press down on this flat side. That will clip the lobster clips as well as the support bar. The shift key is designed just like the space bar key, but it's a little bit smaller. There are two support bars on here, one on the top, one on the bottom. We're gonna attack this entire key from the side and the bottom. We're gonna first take off the bottom support bar and then we're gonna release the bottom lobster clips. So go from the side and then run it along the bottom. You should hear two little clips release. And then we're gonna put pressure on the top of the key, pry up just a bit. There's one switch on the right side and then there's another switch on the left side here where we'll pry up and it should release those lobster clips. You're going to flip the key up. Now you can see the bottom support bar that we released. The lobster clips attach right here and there is a top support bar. You can either release it from the key cap or you can lift the support bar out of this little hook channel right here. It looks very complicated and it things are fragile, especially these little aluminum hooks right here that hold those support bars into place. And you do wanna be very careful when removing these shift keys. For reinstallation, you're gonna float the bottom bar in here and push it down as far as it can hook in. Then you're going to take the key, attach the top support bar, drop it into the channel, and then you're gonna roll the key over. You're gonna press down on the top of the key while pulling it towards you a little bit, and then you're going to push the key all the way forward, which locks those awning clips into place, and then you're going to put pressure on the bottom of the key. That's going to clip those lobster clips where they need to be, as well as the bottom support bar. Last but not least, probably the most difficult key on this board is the space bar key. We're gonna attack this one from the top, so I'm actually going to rotate the keyboard this way. There is a support bar along the top. There is a support bar along the bottom. And there are two key switches right about here that have the awning hooks on this side and this side and the lobster hooks about right here. So we're going to go from the side. 
You can't see it, but I can. The support bar, I have my screwdriver in between it and the keycap, I'm just going to run it along the outside of the key. I can hear it clicking and unclipping. And then I'm going to look for the key switch and then I'm gonna put pressure on this side of the key with my thumb. I'm gonna lift up on where the key attaches to the lobster clip on the key switch and try to get it to unclick. Now on this side, it already released the key switch because of some prior damage to this keyboard, but you would move over here and do the same thing. I can see the key switch and I'm just gonna separate it from the key like that and then rotate the key away from me. Now you can jiggle the the bottom support bar of the keyboard out of the little holding clips and then put the key to the side. So the damage that was done to this keyboard, it makes these key switches come off of the board a little bit easier than they should. So I just had to press it down to place it back where it needs to go. And to, and to reinstall the spacebar key, you're gonna free float this support bar right here and then you're going to take the end of the other support bar that's attached to the key and you're going to drop it into place, which is underneath a hook over here and underneath a hook over here. Then you're gonna rotate the key down towards you, put some pressure on it here, and then push it all the way towards the edge so there's no gap right here. That slides the key into the right position with the four awning clips, and then we're going to press down here, which is attaching the key to that support bar as well as those lobster clips on the two switches. The key should be able to press evenly on all sides. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to remove this key switch. I don't recommend you doing this if you don't have to because it's a pain. You could cause some damage to the switch or to the aluminum on the keyboard, rendering the entire key useless. So in order to get the switch off, you're gonna take your strong prying tool and you're going to try to work this part of the switch over this hook right here. So I'm gonna put a, a pressure going this way as well as up at the same time to try to remove the plastic over this little hook. It looks a little bit like that. I got one side off, now I'm gonna work on that other side. I'm pushing and I'm lifting, kind of controlled at the same time. If you slip, you could easily break these little plastic nubs down here or any other part of the plastic key. Now that those two are unhooked, we're just going to lift the key switch, push down on it to release these two little attached nubs down here from those aluminum hooks, and then the key switch comes out. So say you have your key switch and it's separated somehow, we're gonna orient them correctly, reassemble them, and then put them back in the keyboard. All right, you see that notch in the switch? We're going to put the notch side facing up. That exposes these two little crevices, which are going to be where we put these little nubs of the hinge into to reassemble the switch. The inner side of the switch has a notch and we're going to have that facing up as well. Then you're going to have the squares on the bottom and the rectangles on the top of the switch orientation. We're gonna drop the inner switch inside of the outer switch. We need those nubs to drop into that channel. So we're going to pick the switch up. Then you're gonna push that inner switch that direction and there's a little click and it puts those nubs a little bit farther into this channel and then you can see the switch is now reassembled. Now we're gonna have to put the reassembled switch back onto the keyboard. If you don't remember how it goes, you can always lift up a neighboring key to look at it. So we're gonna orient the switch with the notch side facing down and the flat side of the switch facing up. And then the squares on the bottom side of the keyboard and these rectangles on the top. You're gonna put the switch in like this. First, you're going to want to hook these bottom nubs underneath the little aluminum hooks on the keyboard. That will hold the switch into place. And then there are two more hooks on the top here. You can press down and forward at the same time with your finger. That will push the inner part of the switch 
over these two little metal hooks, reassembling this scissor switch. I really hope that this tutorial was helpful. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, subscribe for more projects. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments section, or if you want to say thanks, I appreciate the support and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.